Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, who am I kidding? Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, tonight I am joined with this. This is a Besson BE955 three-valve compensating baritone. I use this instrument with uh, the local band that I play for. I'm currently playing a majestic second baritone. Uh, and this is one of the staple instruments in the British style brass band scene. It's a small bore instrument, uses the same size mouthpiece as a small bore tenor trombone. And this particular instance was considered the sort of the pinnacle, one of the go-to instruments uh, if you needed to buy a baritone for your British style brass band. It uh, has now been surpassed by the Besson uh, Prestige range if you want a four valve instrument, although this model is still produced as the three valve option if you want that. Uh, this particular model has the three-valve compensating uh, valve mechanism. You can always tell that apart from a three-valve non-compensating instrument because it has this big sweeping tube uh, that goes from the third valve through to the first valve. Uh, and it is a professional level instrument. It's not without its pitfalls though, but even though I'm going to point out some of these pitfalls, I still consider this to be a very nice instrument to play and certainly a whole lot better than some of the other options that are available on the market today. The compensating valve block enables us to get more of the valve combinations in tune. If you use the first or second valve by itself, or the first and second valve together, the airflow just goes straight through the instrument and out. However, if you use the third valve, uh, the airflow goes through this uh, tuning slide here, back through to the first valve, and it takes a second pathway through the first, second, and third valves, and then goes out the instrument. What that means is that whenever you use the third valve, the amount of resistance caused by those extra bends and turns is increased. Uh, and so certainly one of the things that I noticed when I first started playing this particular instrument is that when you use the third valve, you've got that extra resistance to deal with. It's not a problem once you've played uh, the instrument for a while and you've got your lips used to it, but it is something that uh, you will notice. Now this, as I said, is a professional level instrument, but it's got a couple of bugbears, a couple of things that I really don't like about it. The first is the valve guides. With piston valves like this, we only really want them to do one thing. We want them to move uh, in a vertical basis on the vertical axis up and down smoothly. We don't want, we don't need them to cook for us or mow our lawns or do anything like that. One thing we certainly do not want them to do is to rotate. Um, and so to prevent valves from rotating, they have what's called a valve guide. There's a little notch that's built onto the valve to ensure that they stay in that vertical alignment. Um, on this instrument, what Besson have decided to do is instead of incorporating the uh, valve guide into the actual metalwork of the valve, they've got this little plastic thing that sits on top of the valve. It's a little plastic piece of black nothingness, and it clips to the valve stem, this little part in the middle here, and that uh, fits with a little cutout on the uh, middle part of the valve and is supposed to keep the valve in alignment. That's all very well and good and it works fine in most circumstances but plastic being plastic and being even less strong than my favourite Chinesium alloy means that it's going to get weakened over uh, its lifespan and when that valve guide does get weakened and loses its, um, loses its ability to clip onto the valve stem it's going to come loose, it's going to jam the valve up and it's going to do that at the most inappropriate time such as when you're on a platform playing in a competition. That's exactly what happened to me with these um, and so I had to deal with that. Not very convenient. They're only about five US dollars to buy a set of three new ones but it's something that Besson should have known better for. This is an expensive instrument and using plastic on such a critical piece was a dumb idea in my opinion. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is that the instrument has got two spit valves. It's got one on the main tuning slide here, one on the first valve tuning slide. However, a lot of water gets stuck in the uh, penultimate 
bottom bow of the instrument. I don't know what this the name for this is called specifically, but the airflow goes through the valve block, through the main tuning slide, and then through the second uh, bow here, and then it goes out through the bottom bow of the instrument and up into the bell section. This part here is where a lot of the water uh, and spit and liquid and things get stuck. The only way you can get that out is to stop playing your instrument, obviously, and rotate the instrument. And once you've rotated the instrument a full two times, water will suddenly come out the end of it. It's annoying, it's inconvenient, it's inelegant, um, and it's frustrating. As, as a small bore instrument, it doesn't take a lot of water to interrupt the tonal qualities of the instrument. Uh, so this has been a review, a discussion of this instrument. It still is a professional quality instrument, so even though I point out these niggly little foibles, and I'm undoubtedly going to have some people who call me uh, nitpickers and all the rest, I still think it's a fantastic instrument. Um, I started this video with a uh, extract out of a piece called Fly or Die, which is a solo for bass trombone. Uh, and I'm going to finish this video with an extract out of a piece called Harlequin, which is a solo for B-flat euphonium. Solos for baritone specifically, a bit hard to come by it seems. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.